We were not created by God the way that somebody made the soup you just ate. Or somebody makes cookies. God didn't mix us in a bowl and put us in the oven and pull out little gingerbread men. We are begotten spirit children of heavenly parents. So when we sing, I am a child of God, we can feel the same realization that my friend felt in Zion's as he compared himself to the rocks and the stars. And we can realize that there's something a little more to the phrase than just something we've memorized. Yes, wonderful things happen on mountaintops. You know, Moses had an incredible encounter with God. And God told him, you are my child. He validated Moses' worth. And after the experience was over, Moses said, man is nothing. Now that's weird. God just told him how special he was, and then he turns around and says, man is nothing. Man is nothing. See, I've always thought that would be a great youth conference theme. You are nothing. I mean, can't you just see the t-shirts? Dust thou art. I mean, I think that's an awesome theme. But nothing does not mean worthless. Nothing means powerless. And truly, we are powerless without God. Without Him, we have absolutely no power. But with God, with Jesus, through the atonement, we have access to heavenly power, to divine help that enables us to do all things in Christ that strengthen us. When my son was 16, my oldest son, we lived in New Zealand because I was directing a study abroad program for BYU. So we took the BYU students over and I took my family and my son came to me one day and he says, Dad! Dad! Bungee jumping! Was invented here! I'm like, cool. He's like, Dad, you don't get it. Bungee jumping was invented here. I'm like, cool. That is cool. He's like, Dad, you don't get it. So I have to go bungee jumping. I'm like, no, Russell. You do not have to go bungee jumping. He's like, Dad, it was invented here. I said, Russell, I know where the electric chair was invented. <laughs> but it doesn't mean I... Well, they can't talk long enough and loud enough that I finally said, fine, you want to go bungee jumping, you can go bungee jumping. Now, I'm imagining, in my little North American head, I'm imagining a bungee tower in the grocery store parking lot <laughs> with little air mattresses all around the bottom. No, that's not how they do it in New Zealand. <laughs> Land of no lawsuits. <laughs> they jump off helicopters. <laughs> they jump off bridges into rivers. They jump off sheer mountain cliffs. There are no air mattresses at the bottom. There's boulders and tombstones. <laughs> I mean, I'm freaking out. My son is going to throw himself off a mountain and I'm just like taking pictures. I mean, I'm freaking out. And the guy puts him into a harness. Now, if you've never done it, it's kind of like wearing an old-fashioned girdle. And the guy straps him into this harness, ties it all up, and it's connected to the bungee cord. Well, the guy leaves to get something. Russell says to me, Dad! <laughs> Dad! Capri! It's too 
tie! I said, it is not! Those were the first words out of my mouth. Now, why did I say that? Because I didn't want him to die. I didn't want him to snap his back. I wanted it tighter, tighter, tighter. How stupid is the person who says, this is too tight. I want to be free. Oh yeah, he's free, all right. The question is, for how long? All right, his freedom ends. And it ends very quickly. And it ends very abruptly and very painfully. Now, Russell was the one who was free. Now, not in spite of the harness, but literally because of the harness. He was the one who was free. Free to jump. Free to jump again, which he did. Free to buy the very expensive video, which he did. Free to show it to everybody who dared come to our house for three years, which he did. <laughs> you wonder why the home teachers gave up? Yeah. You want to see my bungee jumping? <laughs> see, Russell was free because he was willing to put up with a harness. Now, I know, young people, that has to be one of the hardest things for your minds to grasp. But the minute you grasp it, suddenly life, the rules, regulations, standards, commandments, suddenly you're able to see them not as barriers keeping you from what you want, but literally as the thing that's giving you what you want. I know Mormons have a lot of rules. We got lots and lots of rules. You got rules for your hair, rules for your ears, rules for your eyes, your nose, rules for your lips, rules for your top, rules for your middle, rules for your bottom, rules for... You got rules for everything. Right? And every now and then, young Latter-day Saints start feeling like, man, there's so many rules. There's so many regulations. There's so many commandments. These are keeping me down. They're pulling me down. I want to be free. Now, please remember, it's the rules that are actually giving you the freedom that you seek. That's what is so important. You get that perspective, and suddenly everything takes on a whole new meaning. And suddenly you really do start feeling the freedom that God wants you to enjoy and use and have. I know so many young people in the church who say, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy to pray. I'm not worthy to take the sacrament. I'm not worthy to go to the temple. I'm not worthy to go to church. I'm just not worthy. I even had a young man say, I'm not worthy to repent. Now figure that one out. I'm not worthy. Young people, we don't pray because we're worthy. We pray because we need help. We don't take the sacrament because we're perfect. We take the sacrament because we are willing to be perfected. And we don't go to the temple because we've made it. We go to the temple because that's where God and Jesus are making us. They're making us better. They're making us stronger. They're making us like them. We always say that the purpose of the church is to come unto Christ. No, that's not it. Our purpose is to become like Christ. So coming to Christ is not the end. It is the means to the end. It is Jesus who helps us and teaches us and empowers us to become like Him. I bear testimony that you are not alone. You are not worthless. You are not 
dust with God you have power to become like him and I say that in the name of Jesus Christ Amen, Amen.